This tutorial takes a look at the Repligo PDF Reader. So to start, what's that? The Repligo PDF Reader is an Android application that enables a user to view PDF files. What are PDF files? Well, they're files using the special portable document format, thus PDF. Not that you need to know this, but what the heck. As we all learned in Animal House, knowledge is good, right? Examples of the PDF files sent to your tablet are cell sheets, seasonal deals, catalogs, and product information. They're downloaded to your tablets from LNR, usually when you're at home through your Wi-Fi setup. Where do you go to open those files? You got it, the Repligo Reader. Where do you go to show or email those PDF files to your customers? The Repligo Reader. When you open the Repligo PDF Reader, you'll be on the screen the reader was on when you last left it. The best screen to be on when you open the Repligo PDF Reader is this one. It's the best place to start in your search for files. We'll call it the starting point screen. Here's the deal. When you're on this starting point screen, you'll see the following path at the bottom of the page. Indicating by its location at the far right of the path that the download folder is opened and you are at the best starting point to get to your files. If you ever get lost in the Repligo Reader, and that can certainly happen with all the screens and different folders and documents, look down at the path. If you see a single backslash, click on the storage folder at the top of the screen. If you ever see backslash storage, click on the SD card zero folder at the top of the screen. If you see backslash storage backslash SD card zero, then click on the download folder at the top of the screen. You'll then be back at the starting point screen. Also, notice the three options at the top of the screen. In most cases, you'll want to have that on device. Although, if it's on recent, it will simply be showing you any files you recently opened. To this point, I've just been talking about folders. You're probably asking, how do I get to the files, to the documents that help me with sales and with my work? In its current layout, the starting point screen has three main folders, catalogs, news and information, and sales. Here's the type of information found in each. Now, of course, this layout could change as circumstances change, but for now, this is what you should see. So let's tap our way into one of these and get to some files and documents. We'll go into catalogs. More folders will come up, but you'll be closer to the files. Click on any of those folders, let's say GM, and two catalog files are available. Click on either of these thumbnails and the actual catalog will appear and open. To see the different pages of a document, you can scroll up and down, you can select the individual page from the page thumbnails that stretch across the bottom of the screen. You can also create and use bookmarks, which I'll show in a minute. With the document open, there are three available bars. At upper right is the action bar. Along the right side is the annotation bar. And across the bottom is the page thumbnails that we just discussed. If at any time you want these to disappear, tap on the screen. To reappear, you got it, tap on the screen again. Now again, at the top right is the action bar. That will have different action possibilities depending on what you're currently doing on the screen. 
Right now, we're just viewing the document. So the actions available are for the document. The eye icon is for viewing options. You might switch the theme to night or adjust the brightness. The next icon is for bookmarks. For most documents, there will be an area for personal bookmarks and for document bookmarks. Personal bookmarks are those created by the user, by you. And the document bookmarks are embedded in the document. We'll come back to this in a minute after we create a bookmark for this document. The third icon indicates where on the document there might be any annotations. Right now there aren't any, but I'll get to that in a minute also. There's a search engine icon. Pressing on the action icon to the far right produces a drop-down list with some interesting options. You can zoom by a particular percentage. You can go to a particular page. Let's say 36. Press OK. Incredibly, there's a read aloud. Click on this. I'm not going to here. But click on this and a voice will start reading the print on the page on the screen. That's crazy, right? Add bookmark is an option, and we're going to click there. Add bookmark comes up, and the virtual keypad appears. Here I can give the page of the document I'm currently on a name. Since it's sports-related toys, I'll call the bookmark sports. Press OK. I want to be able to come to this page quickly when I sit down with my customer. So for now, I'm going to purposely go to a different page, then click on the bookmark icon. Open personal bookmarks, and there's my sports page. If I click on it, I go straight to the sports toys page. And I can make up as many bookmarks as necessary to help my presentation go smoothly. There might also be pre-designed document bookmarks that allow you to use an index to go directly to certain areas in the document. There I went straight to books. Now I'm going to go to page 2 and perform some annotations on my document. Now, whether you'll ever use this or not, who knows? The annotation bar is along the right side of the screen. The first demonstration is for highlighted text. I press and hold to highlight a word in the document and bring up highlight bars at the edges of the word. If I press and hold a highlight bar, I can move it along to highlight more area. Now I have the entire phrase highlighted, increased sales and profits. It takes a little time and practice to get the hang of those highlight bars. Now the action bar across the upper right contains actions to affect the highlighted area. So I can copy and paste the highlighted area. I can highlight it with color, underline it, strike through it, and even add a sticky note next to it. To start though, I'm going to give it a highlight color. You can see it highlighted the entire phrase in green. Click on the highlighted area again and I have a few new actions at the top. This time not for the highlighted text, but for the highlight color itself. Click on the art icon and select a new color. Back to the action bar. Click on the text box icon and I can write a note for this highlighted area. There's already a note there, but I want to erase that and write a new one. So I press and hold on the first word and move my highlight bars until the entire phrase or whatever I want to erase is highlighted and press the X on the keypad.
I'm going to write myself a new note. But wait, why write it when I can just speak it? Check this out. Great seller. I pressed on the microphone key on the keypad, then I spoke my note, great seller. I tapped pause to turn the microphone off, but in the meantime, my voiced words printed in the notes. And I minimized the microphone and OK my note. Next time I'm on the page, I can click on the note icon and be reminded of something I voiced in earlier. Let's do one more highlight. We'll highlight the welcome at the top of the page. Now if I tap on the sticky note icon on the action bar, I can again type myself a note. I'll erase the current note and type in voila. I don't know why, but that's what I'll type in. And OK it. Now there's a little sticky note next to the word welcome. Press on the sticky note and the action bar opens for that note. There I can change the note's color. Or we can view or change the note. Or we can trash it. Now I'll go through some of the other annotations quickly. Text box. Text box certainly has some interesting actions across the top, including font size and such. Scribble. We'll trash the scribble. Straight line. Arrow. Oops, let's turn that guy around. Box. Circle. Will you ever use some of this? Maybe not, but it's there if you want to get creative with the presentation. You can leave those annotations on your documents. Leave the Replico reader and when you return they'll still be there. They remain until you delete them. They will even remain on your document when you attach it to an email. So you can get creative. One more thing on your document. You can annotate in real time with highlight, underline, or strike through by tapping that icon on the annotation bar, then immediately pressing, holding, and moving on the document. I'll underline the top line of the document. A few final notes. Remember, you can make the three bars appear and reappear by tapping on the screen. Remember also, there's an annotation icon and listing on your document action bar. It brings up any annotations by type and page. If you go to settings, there's one in particular I'd like to point out.
It's way at the bottom. It's the volume key navigation. Turn that on. Return to a document. And you can go from page to page in a document by pressing the volume control on the side of the tablet. You can't see me doing that, but the volume up and down button is just below the on off button. It works really well to go from page to page. If you find a URL on a document page, you can press on it and it will take you to that internet page. You'll have to select Firefox first as the provider, but then you'll be on the website. Also, if you have a document open and want to attach it to an email straight from there, click on the far upper right icon. Choose File, then Share. Click on Email, and off you go. You're ready to type in an email address and send. One more thing. We've kind of worked our way into the depths of the PDF reader. Now it's time to get out. I'm going to use the back button to work my way back to the download folder. Click back once and I'm back to the GM catalog page. Click back again and I'm back to the list of catalog types. Click back again and I'm back to the download page previously referred to as the starting point page. Notice this entire time I'm not using the up folder to move about. I would really suggest never pressing on that folder. It's not really necessary. Meanwhile, as an intentional mistake, I'm going to press on the back button from the starting point page, something you should really never do. Then I'm going to click back again and again. Now I'm really getting lost. But remember the information at the beginning of this tutorial about the path. From here, with just the backslash visible as a path, I click my way back to the download page by pressing storage, then SD card zero, then download, and baby, I'm back. Now you might be saying, does this tutorial ever end? Well, yes it does, right now. And that's all, folks. Thanks for watching, and good luck with your tablet.